I'm David Altschiller. I'm a criminologist with the Institute for Health and Social Policy at the Johns Hopkins University. Uh, I've been working uh, on uh, adolescence crime and justice issues for about 30 years now. And the good news is that based on the science and the evidence and the research, uh, we have a great deal of information that can help us understand what we can do with young people who get into trouble. And ultimately, our goal would be to um, uh, reduce recidivism. Uh, to have them maintain a law-abiding lifestyle. Um, the less good news is that in many places we are not practicing or implementing what we actually know would be the best course of action to ultimately help our young people and uh, enhance public safety. So what I'm going to do is just very briefly explain to you uh, a number of lessons that have been learned over the years in the research that's been done and uh, that will help us to think about, from a practice point of view, what it is that we need to do to ultimately uh, help our young people who do get into trouble, who get arrested, and uh, in some instances get incarcerated. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that um, uh, our young people who get incarcerated uh, oftentimes do not improve because of their being incarcerated. Uh, sometimes we're lucky if they're no worse off uh, when they go out than when they went in. In other instances, quite frankly, uh, they are worse off. Uh, they've learned the wrong lessons uh, and it has not been helpful to them and it's also uh, made, made, uh, ultimately made them uh, less acceptable to sort of the outside world who might be fearful of them or might be reluctant to employ them or uh, to give them a, a helping hand. So from a uh, point of view of assessing exactly what it is that we're dealing with with our young people once they get involved in the justice system, we really need to assess and classify very carefully what their real risk is uh, for uh, getting into trouble again, for breaking the law, for reoffending. Uh, and the truth is, is that uh, many young people who get arrested do not get arrested again. Uh, and the truth is, is that many young people who go on probation uh, do not uh, get into trouble again. Uh, where we have to be very careful is that we do not overreact in our uh, desire to uh, punish them. It's fine to hold them accountable. It's fine to punish them. But if we go too far, if we're too drastic, if we're too harsh, then the odds are that uh, they may end up uh, worse off uh, than they were beforehand and ultimately that's really not the objective that we want to accomplish. So from a assessment point of view with our young people, once they get involved with the system, we have to really determine who's most at risk for reoffending. Now the truth is, is that some of these young people have any variety of needs that need to be met. But that doesn't mean that they're at risk uh, for delinquency. It just means that they've got issues that need to be addressed. Those issues oftentimes are best handled outside the justice system. Uh, unfortunately, in some instances, uh, there are folks who believe that they're not going to get the help that they need outside the justice system, so they end up getting further immersed in the justice system. Now, that's a real dicey uh, situation because uh, we have to ask ourselves whether or not they're going to get the help that they need that will ultimately produce law-abiding behavior uh, when they're further immersed in the justice system. And as I've already indicated, uh, when we incarcerate these young people, uh, in many instances, they actually uh, wind up not improving and they're actually worse off. So assessment is key. Assessment for risk of reoffending or delinquency. Um, assessment for other issues they may have, uh, if they've got emotional or mental health problems, um, if they've got uh, issues with their health, um, if they've got substance abuse problems, uh, we need to begin to address those issues. But that does not necessarily mean that they're posing a great uh, risk to public safety. So we have to be very, very careful. The other thing I should say is that it's very important to assess for strengths and for assets, and for aptitude, and for interests. Because oftentimes in the justice system, we don't do that, or we don't do it very well, and we miss the opportunity to really work on the things that would be their strengths, or potentially could become their strengths. And that's important because ultimately, if they're going to go a law-abiding route, they've got to have opportunities that ultimately correspond to things that they do well, to things that they're interested in, and to sort of pro-social aptitudes that they have. Uh, so from an assessment and classification point of view, very, very key. The next, the next uh, lesson I think that we've learned over the years is about um, enhancing their motivation. 
Uh, some of these young people, quite honestly, have fairly antisocial views about things. They've been formed from perhaps the way they've been socialized or not socialized. Perhaps they've been victims of violence. Perhaps perhaps they've witnessed a lot of violence, perhaps they have some uh, traumatic stress. So we really need to be thinking about how we can work with them so that they can um, uh, change on the inside. And changing on the inside is not simply a matter of uh, their being fearful of getting caught because they're doing something wrong. Uh, if we can only depend upon their fear of being caught, that's a pretty uh, tough road to hoe because the fact of the matter is, is they're not always going to have somebody watching over them. And if we have to worry that as soon as they don't have somebody watching over them, they're going to go about antisocial ways, then it seems to me we haven't achieved very much. So thinking about what motivates them uh, internally, intrinsically, is extremely important. And there are interventions that do that really well. One type of intervention is called cognitive behavioral therapy. And what that does is it really focuses on sort of antisocial attitudes and beliefs that young people have. Uh, from a targeted intervention point of view, what we really want to do is deal with the issues that are potentially most problematic for, for them and ultimately uh, could lead them in the further direction of being antisocial. So uh, conflict resolution, uh, impulse control, um, uh, these are extremely important um, things that these young people need to be taught. They can learn them. They can practice them. Uh, so we have to target our interventions around the particular issues that they have that ultimately, if they're not addressed, could get these young people into more and more problems with the justice system. Um, the other point that I would make is that it's extremely important to think about the staff, the volunteers, and the folks that we wrap around these young people. Because the truth is, is they uh, emulate uh, what they see and they learn from others that are around them. And if those folks are antisocial or negative or are basically role modeling uh, in a, a negative direction, then I'm afraid that our young people are not going to learn very much. So we've got to get staff and volunteers and mentors and, and family members uh, and others who are going to surround these young people and ultimately work on reinforcing uh, and developing uh, positive skills. Uh, and so that means that um, staff who are going to be um, overly uh, disciplinary or punitive in their orientation or very rigid um, are teaching these young people the wrong lesson. Uh, if staff are going to basically teach these young people that they should simply do what they're told, then that's great as long as what they're being told is in a pro-social direction. But if what they're being told by antisocial people, by gang members, by others who um, are perhaps uh, not law-abiding, then uh, we do not want them following uh, that direction. So dealing with temptation, uh, dealing with, uh, with negative influences that may be surrounding them uh, is something that we really need to work on. Again, those are skills that can be learned, but if we don't work on those skills, then the chances that these young people are going to develop them are actually very, very low. Uh, two other points that I want to make that I think are really in this lessons learned kind of way of thinking. Uh, we really need to increase uh, our uh, way that we uh, respond to them in a positive way. So when they are achieving something, when they're successful, when they're accomplishing things, uh, we want to reinforce that. Uh, oftentimes in the justice system, that is not what happens. More likely what will happen is, is that uh, violations or infractions or not being compliant is what draws attention. Uh, but sometimes these young people who are doing reasonably well, who are accomplishing things, uh, who are being successful, there's really no positive reinforcement. Um, there's no incentives that are built into how we deal with them. It's extremely important that we build that into our intervention because we need to show them that what gets a reaction is not just acting out and not just being a disciplinary problem or, not, or just being non-compliant, but actually what will ultimately get a reaction is when they are successful, when they are uh, showing us that they can accomplish things. And uh, that is a way that we positively reinforce things that they're doing that are 
uh, actually uh, going well as opposed to simply reacting to them being negative. If they know that the only way to get a reaction is to act negatively, I can assure you from an adolescent point of view, that's exactly what they're going to do. And frequently that's what happens when they get involved in the justice system, particularly if they're surrounded by people who are not particularly well schooled and trained and acclimated to deal uh, in a very positive way with young people and with teenagers. Um, the last point I want to make uh, is that we really need to engage in an ongoing way the community and family members and outside supports. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is that their involvement, particularly in the juvenile justice system, is time limited. And even if they get involved in the criminal justice system, at some point they're not going to be involved anymore. And so what we're really going to need to depend upon is um, having them surrounded by and immersed in networks uh, and by supportive people who are going to ultimately be able to help them. We need to have them learn where it is they can go when they're having trouble before things actually go terribly wrong. And if we do that, and I think we follow the lessons that I've been outlining, I think we're going to be in a much better position ultimately uh, to turn around their lives and ultimately enhance public safety. Thanks very much.